The second habit is dua. Dua is the weapon of the believer. It is the right of Muslim children that their parents pray for them. Pray for them even before they're born. That their, wife, their parents make dua when they have relations as the Prophet ﷺ prescribed. And Allah described the righteous worshippers of himself, Ibad rahman as making the following dua, Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata ayun. O our Lord, grant us from our spouses and children a coolness to our eyes. And this was the way of the prophets. We find Prophet Zakariya praying to Allah saying, Rabbi hab li min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyiba. Innaka sami'u dua. O my Lord, grant me from yourself a good offspring. You are indeed the all hearer of invocation. And Allah answered his prayer saying, Wa hananam min ladunna wa zakata. وكان تقيا وبرا بوالديه ولم يكن جبارا عصيا I made him Yahya compassionate and pure from sins and he was righteous and dutiful towards his parents and he was neither arrogant nor disobedient So we should make as parents sincere dua for righteous children sincere dua which should come from the bottom of our hearts with a certainty that our dua will be answered. As Abu Huraira related that the Prophet ﷺ had said, Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Wa'alamu anna Allah la yastajibu dua'an min qalbin ghafilin lah. Call on Allah, being certain that your prayers will be answered. But know that Allah does not answer the prayers of a negligent, playful heart. So when we make dua, for righteous children, it's not just getting the dua from the Quran or from the Sunnah and just repeating it ritualistically. It is reflecting on that dua and saying it with the full force of our hearts and our souls. Furthermore, sincere dua will only be accepted from the righteous. As the Prophet ﷺ explained in a hadith in which he said, O people, indeed Allah is good and pure and he accepts only what is good and pure. Indeed Allah has commanded the believers to do what he commanded the messengers. Then he recited the verse, O messengers, eat from the good things and do righteous deeds. Indeed, I'm well acquainted with whatever you do. And he also recited the verse, O oh, you who believe, eat from the good things that I have provided for you. Then he mentioned, like a man on a long journey whose hair was disheveled and dusty, raising his hands up to the sky, saying, O oh, my Lord, O oh, my Lord. But his place of eating was haram. His place of drinking was haram. His clothing was haram. And his body was fed with haram. How could his prayers be answered as a result of that? So, when we talk about making sincere dua, we must have also the necessary conditions for that sincere dua to be accepted. So we try to fulfill them as much as we can. We try to choose the optimum times for dua, and we try to make sure that the other conditions are fulfilled. Also, one aspect of dua for our children is choosing a good name for our children. By choosing the names of the righteous, righteous of the generation before us, this becomes a kind of dua for our child. Also, if we choose the names which have good meanings, this is also a form of uh, taking a good omen out of that name which is permitted. The Prophet ﷺ permitted this element of omen taking when he forbade all others. 
So choosing good names for our children, not traditional tribal national names, but good names, names of good meaning, either those which the Prophet ﷺ recommended, Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, or those of people among the Sahaba. So when your child asks you, well, what does this name mean? You're able to tell them something good, either in its meaning or who had that name as an example to them. The third habit is, as I said earlier, the example. And this is perhaps the hardest habit to develop. It is the right of Muslim children that their parents be good examples to them. Religiosity and character play a major role in the rearing of righteous children. One cannot get away with telling children to do things which they don't do. Allah curses it in the Quran. Do you command people to righteousness and forget, forget yourselves? The saying, do as I say, not as I do, this doesn't work. Yes, we may be able to force them on that basis, but the children will not learn righteousness that way. They will not be raised truly righteous. They will be hypocrites. They will do it because you said, do as I say. It doesn't matter what I do, you do as I say, so therefore you do it. If the mother is modest and shy, she wears hijab, then the daughters will be that way. If the mother is gentle, the children will be gentle. If the children see the mother exert herself to worship Allah, then they will want to copy her. If she yells and screams and hits, then they will do the same. If she controls her anger, so will the children. If parents, especially the mother, are not affectionate and kind, compassionate and merciful, the children will not be. If the mother backbites, so will the children. If the mother lies, so will the child. Often parents teach their children how to lie. For example, if someone calls the house and the parents don't want to speak to that person, they tell the child, tell them I'm not here. They've just taught them how to lie. Or the mother may tell the girl or the son to hide certain things from the father. She does things that the father's told her not to do. So she'll tell the kids, don't tell your father. Well, she's teaching them how to lie. Parents should try to make themselves the best possible example of the best possible example of good character because character is something which can mostly be learned by example. Character. The Prophet ﷺ summed up Islam as being a religion of good character. He said, I was only sent to perfect for you the highest of moral character traits. So he stressed the importance of character. We have to be, as parents, that example. 